Mr. Speaker, say, Honorable Prime Minister, Honorable Leader of Shishan, Honorable Members. Mr. Speaker, say, I rise this morning to update this House on the new programs that I had announced last week, Friday, to further expand commercial agriculture, increase exports, expand employment opportunities and livelihood opportunities, increase farm and household income, and secure Fijian households with regard to food and nutrition. Mr. Speaker say, over the last 10 years, agricultural output has been rapidly increasing. Over this period, non-sugar agriculture compound annual growth rate has been 6.3%. Our exports for fresh and chilled products have surpassed $100 million last year. But, it's not, but that's not enough for us. If you look around and take a stock of the critical resources for agricultural expansion, we can do much better than this. Mr. Speaker, sir, despite an established tourism sector, I strongly feel that we still have a strategic advantage in agriculture. It's a sector which, if we agree with the famous trade economist, Hek Shawilin, who argues that a country will produce and export that particular commodity, which utilizes the most abundantly available factor intensively, then it is agriculture, Mr. Speaker, sir. Hence, we want to further expand this sector and utilize the abundantly available resources wisely, strategically, and for the betterment of all those who will be involved in an inclusive and sustainable growth model that we are now uh, engaging in the agriculture sector. Mr. Speaker said, while discussing and converging on what new we have to do in line with the Ministry's strategic plan, we further, to further leverage Fiji's agriculture sector, we first listed down some of the critical binding constraints. While identifying the binding constraints, we wanted to ensure we encourage an inclusive and sustainable agriculture growth model, Mr. Speaker said. An inclusive agriculture growth model is one where everyone who participates in the growth process, Mr. Speaker said, and when the surplus is created, it will then cascade down to all those who are participated, all those who are participating in this inclusive growth model. A sustainable growth model, Mr. Speaker say, is an agriculture which grows on its own expense and is treated like a business. Mr. Speaker say, having listed the binding constraints for agriculture growth and expansion, we then set forth to fine tune existing programs as well as develop new programs so that these constraints can be unlocked and agricultural growth unleashed. Mr. Speaker say, in this round of resource allocation, we noted the following constraints that need immediate attention. Large tracts of quality land, not under production. Low rate of farm mechanization. Low levels of irrigated farms. Limited number of nurseries to support farmers. Low number of fruit tree orchards. Low infiltration of technology in Fiji's agriculture sector, such as the use of hydroponic system. Poor equipment sets used by women farmers slow transition of subsistence livestock farmers to medium and large holdings, poor dairy breed stock and dairy farming system, Mr. Speaker said. Mr. Speaker said, to address these constraints, please allow me to introduce and provide an overview of some of the programs that the Ministry will be deploying in the coming weeks. Mr. Speaker said, we wish to promote a hybrid system of dairy farming in Fiji. First of all, we are continuing to support the current model of pasta and dairy cattle management that we have around Fiji. This work will continue. We are supporting farmers to improve their pastures, while at the same time cleaning the farms of TB and brucellosis. However, Mr. Speaker said, we need to have a backup. Should there be a major outbreak of new diseases and drought, we will end up relying totally on imported milk. We cannot rely on, on imported milk, such an important strategic consumption good. This is too risky. Noting this, we are now inviting expressive interest from dairy farmers who set up two dairy intensive farms in Fiji. The dairy farmer will need to construct the intensive dairy set while we will, the ministry, will provide high yielding brown space dairy cows, establish pasture and corn, provide set up supplementary feed for an year, establish fencing to ensure no intrusion of animals which could be infected with this 
which the new breeds could be infected with TB and brucellosis, provide milting equipments, provide shredders and other gadgets used to make bales of hay to store pasta for later use, Mr. Speaker said. Mr. Speaker said, from micro livestock holding to large holdings, farmers will need to construct paddocks. We will assist 340 livestock farmers in phase one with full set of fencing material. We're also writing proposals to seek external grants under climate change funding to assist farmers in protecting their biodiversity in water sources so that we support the farmers to look after the animals so that they can then enhance and expand the biodiversity, protect the water sources, while at the same time confining the animals, Mr. Speaker said. Mr. Speaker said, to ensure quality, pest-free and consistent vegetable supply to restaurants, supermarkets and hotels, we have announced two programs, the establishment of hydroponic and greenhouse agriculture systems. We intend to set up 20 400 plant sized hydroponic system at farmers' fields, and we intend to provide 20 <coughs> covered uh, greenhouses to, at farmers' fields. Mr. Speaker said, <coughs> noting prior period every year and its impact on vegetable supply and price, we intend to provide full irrigation sets to 150 farmers in drier zones in Fiji for agricultural growth and expansion. Each package will be inclusive of irrigation assistance, drip irrigation, fill laterals, sprinklers, pumps, hose, etc. Mr. Speaker said, to improve farm mechanization and farm capital development, we have announced two new programs, Mr. Speaker said. Firstly, we will support around 15 farmers to acquire small machinery by making one-third contribution, while ministry will make the two -third, uh, pick up the two-third cost of acquisition. Secondly, Mr. Speaker said, for the first time, we will support farmers who wish to seek loan from Fiji Development Bank for buying larger plant or machinery or capital construction. We will provide a grant of up to 20% of the full loan amount as equity contribution for a maximum of about 250,000 loan and a minimum of about 10,000 loan, Mr. Speaker said. So of this loan, whatever amount between 10 to a quarter million, 20% equity contribution would be paid to FDB by the ministry, Mr. Speaker said. And we intend to assist around 30 such uh, investors. Mr. Speaker said, our PS Agriculture met with senior staff of FDB yesterday to discuss the rolling out of this program. In attendance was the new head of FDB, Siomina. Mr. Speaker said, we at the ministry are looking forward to the new leadership of the bank. We are indeed blessed to have a highly educated American graduate, a seasoned and reputable banker, to lead our only development bank. He has 20 years of international banking experience across Asia before he moved to Fiji to lead ANZ operations. It is indeed a grab. But unfortunately, some on the other side question his appointment on the basis that he was born in Pakistan. Mr. Speaker said, we want the best to provide the best and most efficient service to our people. But they would rather compromise on that just because he was not born in Fiji. It's sad to say the least. Mr. Speaker said, time and again, I've urged Fijians to put idle land under production. Time and again, members of the other side argued for more support to land-owning units. Here you go. The commercial agriculture, idle land preparation, land cleaning program, designed to lead idle land development. Go where? With a half a with a half a million dollar allocation, we would, we would identify up to 10 acres of track of idle land, take a bulldozer and clear the land, take a digger and do the required drainage, prepare the land, take a tractor and do all the necessary land preparation, provide the planting material, Mr. Speaker say, I'm challenging the members on the other side, here you go. Remember, Mr. Speaker say, I've never, I've never seen members from the other side encouraging landowners to utilize their idle land for development of their community. The members of the Mathangali, Mr. Speaker said. Never. Mr. Speaker said. Mr. Speaker said. We are targeting, we are targeting about 150, we are targeting about 150 to 160 acres of land to be brought under cultivation in this program. We are targeting up to 10 acres for each Matangali, 
We're looking at about 15 to 16 Matangalis to be assisted in this category, up to 10 acres. We'll do everything, Mr. Speaker said. We will take the machine, clear the land, take the tractor, do the land preparation, provide the planting material, Mr. Speaker said. Mr. Speaker said, we're also targeting individuals in the settlements to apply to have land development for up to two acres, Mr. Speaker said. Again, we'll take the bulldozer, clear the land, take the tractor, clear, uh, do the land preparation, and provide all the planting material, all at our cost, Mr. Speaker said. We're looking at about 20 in such individuals to be assisted in this round, Mr. Speaker said, phase one. Mr. Speaker said, what we envisage from this program is a maximum return of investment as we are bringing idle land under cultivation, Mr. Speaker said. Mr. Speaker said, I had alluded to earlier on about an inclusive agriculture growth model, Mr. Speaker said. We want to take agricultural growth and development to the farmers, to the land owning units, to the interior, Mr. Speaker said, rather than just having development in the center at the core, we're looking at a holistic development, including the center and the periphery. Mr. Speaker said, in our attempts to help ensure food and nutritional security of all Fijians, we are strengthening our orchards development program and are earmarking the establishment of another 40, farm, 40 orchards at farmers' fields, Mr. Speaker said. The ministry will be providing seedlings and assist in the establishment of the orchard and also conduct regular monitoring of the program, while the farmer will be responsible for the land preparation and establishment regular management of the orchard. Mr. Speaker said we're looking at, in this round, in this round, two breadfruit orchard, two drinking coconut orchard, two jackfruit orchard, one avocado orchard, one banana orchard, one citrus, one mangosteen, one rambutan, and, a, and, one, and one mango. Mr. Speaker said, in this round, we have got two additional new fruit tree orchard, which is mangosteen and rambutan, Mr. Speaker So as, as I had said it year before last, that every year we'll be bringing in new fruit tree orchards, Mr. Speaker said. Now, Mr. Speaker said, farmers will be selected after field verification and suitability of study, and we want to ensure that, Mr. Speaker said, this investment is not wasted. Last year, when we had established the first round of orchard, Mr. Speaker said, 30% of it didn't take off because farmers did not look after it, Mr. Speaker said. Mr. Speaker said, one of the initiatives which we had announced last year with regard to food security was home gardening program, whereby we provided seeds packages to households in urban and peri-urban areas around Fiji. Mr. Speaker said, I'm pleased to announce that as of today, as of last week, Friday, 77,888 households have been assisted this far. This financial year, we are targeting 47,350 more households to receive the packages, and this will be the third phase of this particular program, Mr. Speaker said. Mr. Speaker said, you may know that in the second round of COVID, we had embarked on this pro program, taking into account all the uh, uh, precautions and protocols to be observed to ensure that our households who are under lockdown were, were able to utilize their free time and also secure themselves with vegetables. Mr. Speaker said, whenever we have this scenario, whether it's a COVID situation, whether it's a cyclone, drought, etc., prices of vegetables shoot up because there's a shortage, the supply issues. Mr. Speaker said, we, we wanted to make sure that we don't get into the situation again, Mr. Speaker said. You, might have, you would have seen, Mr. Speaker said, that we were able to very quickly normalize prices and supply after last year's Yasa and Ana, and we did the same thing in COVID, uh, in the second round of COVID, Mr. Speaker said. And we are very uh, uh, thankful to the households for participating in this program, and Mr. Speaker said, if you go around, you see that how households take pride in, as, have, in establishing home garden and how uh, they are exchanging photos about how they are producing their own uh, vegetables to a large extent, Mr. Speaker said. Mr. Speaker said, we now will begin the fourth phase of the farm support package, which aims to boost production of crops by providing seeds and planting material to farmers. Mr. Speaker said, we had launched this program early last year in terms of providing all the planting material requirement of any farmer 
this is addition to the home gardening text, Mr. Speaker said. I know there's a farmer who wrote to me that you know, I went you know, to collect some seeds and I was given a small little package. But that's not, that's not meant for the farmer. That's meant for home gardeners, Mr. Speaker said. For the farmers, we've got a different package, Mr. Speaker said. So, Mr. Speaker said, we are launching that again. I want to, um, of course, we are utilizing the resources from our budget, as well as I also want to thank the Government of India for pro providing us with seven tons of uh, seeds, dry seeds for a selected number of 12 uh, vegetable horticultural crops. But in addition to that, we are also providing uh, um, uh, green planting material like dalosakas, cassava cutting, yam cutting, duruka cutting, etc. To farmers, whatever their requirement is, Mr. Speaker say, we will provide with the proviso that you know they will progressively return the planting material to us over a three year period. Mr. Speaker say, we also wish to strengthen our women entrepreneurs engaged in agriculture and horticulture crops and floriculture. We wish to provide them with small leverage such as basic tools, silent cloth, small greenhouse kits, cutters, bags, etc. Mr. Speaker say, floriculture industry is now taking its space and place gradually in, in the tourism sector, as well as in the, in the formal commercial and industrial sector. Mr. Speaker, see, we want to support our women uh, uh, entrepreneurs and strengthen their footing in this sector. So we are looking forward to assisting approximately 500 individuals or clusters who would want to you know, uh, uh, get a backup in terms of establishing a small, small nursery or uh, you know, get basic tools, equipment, for floriculture, for cut flower, uh, for, uh, for voi voi work, Mr. Speaker said. So we've got these basic packages done, uh, and now these groups, these individuals can apply to get, that, uh, the, get this basic leverage, Mr. Speaker said. Mr. Speaker said our 5050 village nutritional security program will continue to expand. The 5050 village nutritional program was launched uh, last year on Independence Day, where <laughs> On a particular day, mostly on a Saturday, let's say, uh, we are, the staff of the ministry are at 50 village with 50 seedling of fruit trees. We plant it around the village, Mr. Speaker say, to secure the village with respect to nutrition. Mr. Speaker say, food in an absolute sense, it may not be an issue, food security, but nutritional security is an issue, Mr. Speaker say, balanced nutrition. So while we are expanding agriculture, we also want to ensure that our own population, our own households have balanced nutrition. Mr. Speaker said that this particular program, Mr. Speaker said, we were able to complete 150 village up till last year, but you know, we were, our, our speed at which we do has been affected by COVID, uh, the COVID uh, pandemic that we have. And we uh, expect that in this financial year, we target uh, uh, four rounds, Mr. Speaker say, so we're looking at 400 villages. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, Honorable Speaker said, this program announced today, uh, uh, last Friday, will be delivered concurrently with all of the Ministry of Agriculture's ongoing programs, together with other programs commenced in the last financial year. Mr. Speaker said, through these new programs, we are setting brick by brick the foundation to com expand commercial agriculture help develop more youths, women households, farmers and landowners as successful agricultural entrepreneurs, further increase exports, increase households' livelihood, income and quality of life, and expand employment opportunity. I would like to assure you, Mr. Speaker said, that it is not business as usual at the ministry. Mr. Speaker said, we are not here to roll the ministry, Mr. Speaker said. It won't happen. Status quo is not an option, Mr. Speaker said. Mr. Speaker said, we need to think big. We need to assert ourselves in the local and international market, Mr. Speaker say. We will involve all key stakeholders, explain to them that a growing agriculture will benefit all of them, Mr. Speaker say. As I always said, that when the agriculture sector expands, Mr. Speaker say, everyone will benefit, but they need to participate, whether they are landowner, whether they are labor, whether they are household, whether they are, they, they, are, they are input suppliers, all of them, they must participate, then they will share the surplus that's created by the agriculture, growing agriculture sector. Mr. Speaker say, we continue to hear from the other side, Mr. Speaker say, about you know, agriculture uh, uh, confining to uh, uh, a shorter geographical space. Mr. Speaker say, they unfortunately don't know the reality, Mr. Speaker say. I'm challenging them now, Mr. Speaker say, go motivate 
our landowners to, you know, um, encourage them to get into commercial farming, Mr. Speaker. Say. So this was, Mr. Speaker, say, uh, thank you very much, and I look forward to, to an exciting year for agriculture growth and development and expansion. Thank you, Naka. Naka. I thank the Honorable Minister for his Minister. ministerial statement.